may be seated. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hey, a couple uh, quick announcements before we get started. Three, actually. Uh, first announcement, men's retreat is this weekend. Yeah. Sign up at grow.hope.edu. The deadline is quickly approaching Friday. It's going to be here before you know it. Um, and second announcement, actually second one and a half announcement. There is going to be a women's retreat in January, just to dispel any. There go. Second real announcement, though, um, CDs, three for $15. What a deal. Keppel House, go get them. Get some great music. And then the third announcement, I'm really excited about this one. This Friday night, um, we have the opportunity to host the African Children's Choir here in Dimnit, 7 o'clock. It's going to be a great time, a great concert. Um, it's free. There will be an opportunity for um, an offering, though. But please come out and have a good time with us here um, Friday night, 7 o'clock. Um, that's it for announcements. This morning, hear the word of the Lord from the book of Genesis, chapter 4. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore a son, Enoch. And he built a city and called it Enoch after his son. Erod was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael the father of Methushael, and Methushael the father of Lemek. Lemek took two wives. The first wife was Adah, and the second was Zillah. And Adah bore Jabal. And he was the ancestor of all those who made tents and had livestock. And his brother's name was Jubal. And he was the ancestor of all those who played the lyre in the pipe. Zillah bore Tubal Cain, who made all kinds of bronze and things of iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible is full of stories like this, genealogies. And maybe for some of you, I confess, this was me at some point, this is kind of the boring point. You know, you get to all the names that you can't really pronounce and don't really understand, so you go, and on to the good stuff, right? Because if you're in a group, you don't want to pronounce the name wrong, and it's really kind of boring. What's the point? Here's something that's important for us to understand. Genealogies were very important to ancient Hebrews because family was central to your identity. Where you came from, but actually who you came from said a lot about you. I mean, we see it here, right? The, the family of Jabel. They're the ones that had the livestock and the tents. You know, the other one, the, oh yeah, those are the, the liar players. Who you were says, or who, you, who your family was and your ancestors says a lot about you. And, and that's true for us today, too. Now, I know in families, there's all sorts of personalities and temperaments, and not everybody's the same, right? At the same time, I'm willing to bet there's patterns in your family. Patterns in your family, and as you dig deeper and look back to your ancestors, you'll see some of these patterns play out, for better or for worse. On Sunday afternoon, I got a call from my father to let me know that one of the ancestors in my family had passed away, my great aunt Betty Jane Soldat. Betty Jane was an amazing woman. She died at the age of 80, and it's sad that she died. It's sad for my father. Um, she was the last of his extended family to be alive. It's sad for her children and their families. It's sad for my grandfather. See, Betty Jane was the sister of my grandmother who passed away almost seven years ago, and just as my grandfather and grandmother cared for Betty Jane when her husband died almost 20 years ago, Betty Jane was a great companion and friend to my family after my grandmother died. It's sad. Death is sad. But it's also sad um, because our family will never be the same. Now, our family wouldn't be the same without Aunt Betty. Um, and it's not going to be the same now that she's gone. But she has shaped our family. One of the reasons I'm going to be really, I am really sad, is because Aunt Betty was probably my most faithful pen pal, even though I wasn't really faithful on my end of it. She kept the letters coming. 
Betty Jane, Aunt Betty, she was the aunt that you always wanted to sit with at the table at the reunions because she had the funny stories and just great, <laughs> you never knew what she was going to say, and um, great opinions on things. And they came out in her letters, too. And I found some of her letters. Um, I kept some of them. And they date back to when I was in college, actually. But I just grabbed a couple. I just wanted to highlight a couple things that are pretty common in, in an Aunt Betty letter. And my siblings and I will call each other and we get, did you get a letter from Aunt Betty? Yeah, me too. She kind of would send them out in waves. Now, here's, here's the thing. You can't see it, but Aunt Betty, up in the corner, was always the date, Sunday. This one's from 9 And then a little weather report. Cool, 75 sunny. Just right for a walk soon, exclamation point. <laughs> I loved it. This is great. She sent this to me when I was living in the Dominican Republic. So... She sends this one. She says, hi, Kate. Your grandpa handed me your email of 918. So she never really got into the email, so my grandpa would print off my emails, and then she would respond by letter. And she's a little upset. She got the one at 918, and she hadn't even responded to the one of 830. She's behind. That's like a matter of two weeks. Um, so she goes on, gives me some news at the time. This is a great letter because it told of two bus tours that she went on. Um, and also a bus tour that my grandfather was supposed to go on, weren't sure they were going to supposed to go on. And then she puts in the line, you know, sometimes we put the cart before the horse. So maybe the doctor will give him the okay. He had some sickness. I guess that's when those, uh, one of those times when we make plans with pencil and give God the eraser. That was a line she wrote to me a lot. And it kind of became our tagline back to each other. She continues with the newsy bit. Went to a barbecue, had some brats. Um, her granddaughter was studying for another test, and she wants me to safe, underline, and well. And just to remember that they love to get my letters. Now, the next one, a few la years later, I love this one, because this is just the front of a card. She's, she's going green, folks, and she writes down here, recycled card, nice, huh? <laughs> and then, then beneath it, she gives me her cell phone number. In case I've forgotten, since I haven't called, she probably wants to, you know, stick in there that, hey, just in case you lost that number. And actually, this one starts out with a zinger. This could be kind of common, too. Hi, Kate. Aunt Betty here. Remember me? Probably hadn't written in a little while on my end there. <laughs> and then she starts this letter right away. She says, well, I was reading James this morning, chapter 4, and I came across your name in the margin. Make your plans in pencil and give God the eraser. She's so fun to see your name in the good book goes on to give some political opinions, and ends with, um, oh, yes, saw you and your brother on TV at the Hope Calvin game. Have, hope the next few months will be good regards to all. And then my last letter from Aunt Betty, which came uh, about a year ago. How are you doing? Haven't seen your name in neon signs for a while. I'm really not sure what that means. I've never seen my name in an actual neon <laughs> sign. But she says, during my devotions today, three things brought you to mind. And of course, couldn't pass up the opportunity to write. One, the words of hope was written by someone from Young Life. Two, here, and she sends the words of hope, actually, to me, in case I want to read it. Um, also, the word snippet came up in her devotions, which is a word that apparently I taught her years ago. And she also was reading Proverbs 16. Write your plans in pencil and give God the eraser. Kind of your words. She says, I hope things in Holland are going well for you. Was it ever a thought that you would be in Holland? And her last letter was about the time when I was trying to decide what to do. She said, a few years ago, in her mind, just so you know, it's probably about 15, actually. Um, I remember when the RCA was raving about the Hope Chapel program, and now you're a part of it. Not much news here. Goes on to say the news. Then she does comment, Hope not doing too well in football, but then the Tigers didn't do what they were cracked up to do either. So goes the game. There's always next year. Can't win them all. Enjoy the fall season. Winter will be here. Remembering you always in your prayer, my prayers, Aunt Betty. I tell you about my Aunt Betty for a couple of reasons. First, she is a portrait of a woman who was faithful to the end. And she was a firecracker, hear me clearly. But her faith wasn't something that just popped and fizzled. But she was faithful to the end. Just last summer, my sister and I went to visit her, so a couple months ago, and we came in, and she was dying of, of a lung disease. Her lungs were hardening, and so it became increasingly hard to breathe. Um, she was on oxygen, and I was curious to see if she could keep up her conversation, but tell you what, she did not slow down one bit. And we walked in, she was sitting in her chair with, next to her, the stand with the telephone and a box of stationery in her Bible, always writing letters to the end. 
all of her letters are peppered with scripture. Usually it's in the actual stationery, there's a verse, or she'll comment on her devotions. She was a woman who had the perspective of the word, and her life was not all rainbows and butterflies. She was widowed at a young age. She watched her children struggle and her grandchildren struggle with various things. But she remained trusting even when she didn't understand. And we asked her this summer, my sister is a bit of a historian, she asked her, Aunt Betty, um, how did you, what did you used to do or how did you make friends? Because we were talking about making friends now as an older person. She said, ah, well, I went down to the, you know, went down to the Y and we'd take classes on cooking or sewing or some nonsense like self-defense. <laughs> but really, she said, really, we found our friends at church. We were always at church. Um, that's who our community was. See, my Aunt Betty was someone who had many havers in her life. If you were here in chapel on Monday, Paul talked about havers, people with whom we could study the scriptures and be encouraged. And my Aunt Betty was someone who had havers and was a haver. And my Aunt Betty was committed to her church. All of us, I know here, are committed to something. And we've been talking about Talmudim groups, which is a great way to increase your faith and discipline. But I encourage you, too, to consider that some of you are already involved in groups in your church. You're involved in being a youth group leader. You're involved in a Bible study here on campus already. Be present where you are and be committed. Be faithful to that. And the second reason I tell you about my Aunt Betty this morning is because you're a part of a genealogy. Perhaps you are one who has Aunt Bettys in your life. Perhaps you are paving the way in your family and are going to be the very first Aunt Betty, the Aunt Lauren, or the Uncle Aaron, or the Aunt Lucy. You're going to be the one that years from now, people look back on and see a life that is faithful to the end. Because my Aunt Betty didn't just wake up and become faithful at the age of 80, but it was the things that she did at 60, 30, at the age of 19, that shaped her into a life of faith. All of us are a part of a genealogy, and we have ancestors, and someday our genealogy may continue. So let us just think about that, reflect on that, be grateful for that, and see God's faithfulness in that. Let's pray. God, we are grateful for families as complicated and messy as they can be, God, what a gift it is to have people who have gone before us and now go along with us. We pray that you'll continue to show us the patterns of your faithfulness in our lives. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Enjoy your Wednesday.